Parkland agroforestry is widespread throughout the Sahel. Trees are scattered in fields and integrated with crops and livestock. In the 1970s, these indigenous systems came under pressure from prolonged droughts. There was a dramatic loss of tree cover. But recently, improved rainfall and efforts by land users, supported by development agencies, have revived the parklands. In the past, little thought was given to why farmers nurtured trees in their fields. But now the ecological and economic importance of on-farm species is better appreciated. Agroforestry systems provide multiple benefits for the environment and for increasing numbers of households. Growing human populations do not necessarily mean fewer trees in the landscape. The revival of parkland agroforestry implies the opposite. Farmers are the architects of these dynamic and complex systems. They've responded with skill to changing conditions and new challenges. Usaini Kindo from Burkina Faso is one such farmer. Those who don't know how to use trees mistakenly say that when there are many trees in the field, nothing else can be produced. This is not true. Parklands reflect a process of species selection, density management and strategic pruning over many years. From his trees, Usaini Kindo harvests livestock fodder, medicines for people and animals, and wood for construction and cooking. At the same time, his trees help improve soil conservation, soil fertility, and the microclimate. Usaini has a range of trees. Baobab, Terracarpus, and Balanites. But a special favorite within the mixture is Fiderbia, or Zanga in his language. Under the Zanga, there is no need to apply organic manure or chemical fertilizers. The leaves that fall on the ground improve soil fertility. Zanga has medicinal properties and produces pulps, which provide fodder for livestock. He values baobab too. We use the leaves of the baobab to make a cooking sauce. The leaves may be also sold at the market to earn some money. Geographic and linguistic boundaries are no barrier to these systems. Crossing the border from Burkina Faso to Ghana, parklands remain a constant feature. But while the same principles apply, there are differences in tree species and density, and the crops beneath the trees. Nere and Shia nut trees dominate. Shia is much appreciated for its contribution to nutrition and to the local economy. Uh, we, have, we have Shia nut trees uh, only in the northern part of the country. Uh, and incidentally, it's also the driest part of the country. It's so important because um, most of the trees in the north here can be destroyed by wildfires, but the Shia nut cannot be destroyed by uh, wildfires. Sometimes even fire makes it produce more. Uh, we don't know why, um, but it has so many uses. And of course, now it's an, uh, it's an international sought out uh, commodity that we have found out that uh, is good for body lotion, is good for shampooing, is good for, for so many things. Over the last decades, new local and international markets have emerged for Shia nut products, creating income opportunities for women in particular. Well, uh, the Shia nuts, you know, processing, if you enter every compound, you have Shia nut processes. Because it's a common skill that uh, mothers pass down to daughters 
from one daughter to the other and so on and so forth. The Tihi Suma Shia Butter Processing Center in Tamale is based on these traditional skills. It forms a focal point for social activity while increasing efficiency and capacity. Founded in 2005, it provides the facilities for 60 women to turn their own nuts into sheer butter from the beginning to the end of the two-day process. Sheer nuts are bought from selected communities and transported to the center. They're washed and dried The nuts are then crushed, roasted, and milled to a paste. Cold water is added and mixed by hand. The fat is then melted over a fire The impurities separate out, and these are skimmed off. Finally, the molten butter is filtered. Once cool, it's put into clean containers where it solidifies. The sheer butter is then ready for packaging and sale. The trees of the parklands have many direct uses. Production of sheer butter is one example. But the trees provide indirect benefits as well, affording shade, enriching the soil, and stabilizing the ecosystem. Parkland trees form a parasol under which sustainable land management technologies function at their very best.